I wanted to start with you and ask what your initial reaction to Fletch was, because whether it was in the book or whether it was in the movie, because he's just a very interesting character. <laughs> I went and saw the original Fletch with my friend, Chris Grady. I think we were 13 years old in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I was uh, immediately thought it was so funny that, and then I found out that there were, it was based on a book and I was like, oh, it's based on a book. I, I want to read that book. And then I found out it was not only was it based on a book, but there were a series of books, which was like, whoa, this is very exciting. And they weren't like kid books. They were like adult books. Um, and so I went, okay, this is awesome. I don't have any money. So I have to shoplift to get these books in my <laughs> possession which i did so again sorry to the walden books in florissant missouri it's the statute of limitations uh, exactly it's gotta be it's gotta be uh, expired by now but i was fascinated by even even at that age how different the movie was from the books and i thought oh that uh, movies can just do that they can just be their own thing and and realize that oh well chevy's a kind of a unique talent he he brought all of his skill set his tremendous physical abilities and his 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 particularly you know different sense of humor to that thing and that was great and then they made a sequel to it and it was it was trying to it was kind of trying to do the same thing and capture the same energy and and it wasn't you know quite as good as the first one but it was you know it was what it was and then 30 years pass and you think oh wow uh what's what's going on with that is there anything that's happening with that and and then uh, the, they were like hey we have the uh, options to the rest of these books and i thought oh i can make my own version of it like chevy made his own version of it and uh i i got to my my friend greg matola very excited about the project and and we got to make our own version of this of this series of books and this character that we both really like and uh and hopefully we'll get to do it again yeah well um i mean and this could go for both of you because this is a book that was written in the 70s so how did you want to kind of modernize this adaptation of it well part of it was like yeah do we do we make the decision creatively to set this in the 70s and you know there's a lot of story points that if you set something in the 70s it makes it you know there's no cell phones there's no gps there's no uh, a lot of the things that make our lives uh, more convenient uh, make telling a story in, yeah. in a lot harder because you could just well look it up on your phone, idiot, or <laughs> you know call them immediately because we're all interconnected. So you have to kind of write to to what it is. But we thought because we're we're updating the story, you might as well update. It. We might as well set it in the current day. The story, the book uh, that we based it on, Confess Fletch, has kind of baked in and built in a. A, a little time off for Fletch. So it makes sense that he's he's been away from the game for a while. He's retired. He's living in Italy. He's writing about art. And then he gets pulled back into this mystery that he has to then solve. So it was it was it was a pretty it wasn't without its challenges, but it was a pretty easy decision to to make it current. Yeah. And the books had uh, the, the book has a certain amount of social commentary about the 70s. And the sexual revolution and things that were going on then that that aren't necessarily relatable mores have changed. So I took I poke a little bit of fun at things like influencers and and you know sort of tone deaf white privilege and things like that. Awesome. Um, and then Greg, I know you also mentioned wanting to capture the tone of the original book. Was there something that was really was there anything specific that was important for you to carry over into this adaptation? Well, I love the character. I mean, he's he's has his own. He he's he. How would I put it? Marches to <laughs> his own beat. Yes, he he marches to. He does it in a weird way, but I really think he's on the side of right. He just doesn't really respect authority and doesn't think the usual channels are going to work. He's not going to wait for things for the police to do it. He's not going to wait for the legal system to do it. So he just, you know, starts scamming and lying and breaking a few small laws to get to the bottom of things. He wants things to be better. He wants the bad guy to get caught, but he doesn't wait around for anyone to tell him how to do it. And if he's wrong, which he is now and then, he just moves on and keeps trying. And I just thought this is a really fascinating psychology. And I love this guy. And I also know John is just so great at playing someone who has such ease in the world and doesn't mind being foolish. Um, and, and, you know, and the idea of putting John at the center of a comedy was 
great in my mind. Uh, and the, the book is also like inspired by classic detective novels like Raymond Chandler and Dashiell Hammett. And it was his, his version of a detective character, except he's an investigative journalist. And I love those movies. I love those books. So I wanted to capture that quality from the novel. So cool. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap, but thank you guys for chatting with me. I really enjoyed this film.